Free Carp Vault Learning Series point of view. Tenth topic is Vault Agent, its caching, identity, entity groups, response wrapping. So I am in a Hashi Carp certification homepage, right? For Vault Associate, if you scroll down here, the tenth, ninth topic explain Vault architecture. Under that, Vault Agent, this is the new and the secrets caching and identity groups and response wrapping. These are the new topics, right? So let's try to understand that. So we know very very high level architecture is this is the one. This is is a kind of vault major, right? We are going through the every past lessons. So if you are new, please try to go and watch the initial sessions to understand about this. And vault architecture as per the documentation, this is the one. Now vault agent. So let's say you have an application. and that application wanted to connect and read some secret so usually what we will do is that application will connect to vault by using some authentication method and this vault go and verify whatever github or aws or kubernetes or anything and that will verify and it will issue the token and with that token this application will connect and read the secret for the retrospective calls this is for one application what if you have a, a thousand number of applications a number of applications how you will deal then vault agent will comes into the picture so vault agent vault agent is a client daemon so is something like a, a service which runs in the background during the restarts as well right so for what is a purpose so is to authenticate to the vault system and read the secrets so with respect to, to the hashi carp vault this agent works as simple as that and vault agent what's the benefit is more scalable and simpler way for the applications yes simpler and scalable and when we can use this vault agent when you have a large number of applications or pods or large number of batches or anything which wanted to deal with the vault system as simple as that right now vault provides a four different uh, methods features one is automatic authentication yes that's what the main purpose and also vault agent supports caching as well right third one is vault agent supports templating what is this templating we will see in upcoming slides and other one is vault service you can use as a windows service if your system is windows so now so vault agent how to start the vault agent so it's a very simple command vault agent and slash config so here this is the configuration file which is agent configuration not a vault configuration it's agent configuration so you need to pass a vault configuration file agent configuration file and if you don't know the command and vault agent hyphen h so if you look at here vault agent hyphen h so this will give me the uh, number of commands basically start an agent with a configuration file so this is the what the the configuration file and need not to remember or anything right and you can pass a various parameters right so all right so now go back to the slide so in order to start the agent so you need to have a configuration file that's a first step to remember now what is this configuration file so this is a what the configuration file which is a one configuration file i split into the three images this is a continuation so a pid file vault auto auth sync cache and listeners template blah 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 all this configuration so let's try to understand so vault agent features so vault agents up gives automatic authentication and caching and as well as a templating and also as a window service so auto auth caching and templating so if you go back to one slide right automatic authentication caching templating and window server is a window service so let's try to go each one automatic authentication right so automatic authentication as a name itself is suggesting right so it's the easiest way to authenticate with the in a wide range of environment right and automatic authentication basically consists of methods and sinks so these are the two things which is 
if you wanted to configure automatic authentication method and sync so so number one method method means for automatic authentication what is the way to acquire vault token that's a method because when i say automatic authentication how and sync so whenever uh, basically the automatic authentication happens how the uh, basically the syncing right so how the sync will happen means like writing to a file wrapping the token or encrypt the tokens so right so basically this agent is basically its job is to connect to the world server and pull the secrets but how and where it will write how it will wrap right if it just simply keeps in a plain text or somewhere then it's a very risky some other application some other virus can read this right so that's what the wrapping and encrypting all these things now response wrapping this is one of the another one because the once the response happened that will wrap it right uh, right so wrapping by authentication method or any of the syncing method this is if you go bit deeper into the this auto auth but auto auth point of view this is the what the configuration file this is in the form of a hcl language auto auth method equal to type app role so did this automatic authentication support various types so one example is given as a type equal to app role and sync equal to what is the type of a syncing but here just remember automatic authentication supported by aws app role azure gcp and cloud foundry cert and kubernetes jwt so all this information is available in the documentation right so if you look at the vault project.io and go to the vault agent right and automatic authentication under just click on a method these are the uh, various values for the methods and if i say app role app role pull authentication we have seen in our video if you wanted to do the automatic with aws or whatever then you have to give the respective information and syncing syncing is the only one type is available currently only you can do sync in a only file method only that's as per the documentation so if you go to the sync overview so it support only one only one so only the file only right this is the word the about the automatic authentication and just you go and read this documentation if you are working if not then try to remember what exactly this is. that's it enough right and this configuration will change from the this particular method to method so if i say let's say if i look at the uh, say aws or kubernetes right so it's a role and token path so that's what the unit to pass right and if it is a uh, say uh, app role pull authentication then you need to pass uh, these are the configuration what are the required what are the not required role id file path right role id file path and secret id is optional right so that's what the it means so if i use a kubernetes our favorite right so role is required and so, so, right whatever the role you have to pass means what role kubernetes or back role right that's what the then next vault agent caching so caching is as the name suggests we know what is a caching means right so caching point of view so whenever say let's say one vm there is a agent is running and which will authenticate and require a token by a whatever the configuration method and it will return the token right that token will be right into the sync that's what the caching and for the retrospective calls this particular token will be used right so agent unless it's cache it won't be able to connect right so so this is the client side caching caching of the responses as the name suggests and response caching and renewals are managed by the agent so what this agent will do caching and renewals these are the two important so whatever the important topics i underlined i kept in the form of a red so that in case of exam or in case of any uh, anywhere this will be used this is taken from the documentation in including the images now automatic authentication by using this automatic authentication you can force the token as well right and forcing means what so you can persist the cache configuration so when i say caching caching point of view whether you will do permanent caching no you can configure the caching renewal caching clear caching when to evict and when to 
clear so of course every caching mechanism caching architecture caching algorithm will have all the features so no wonder here it will have this kind of caching configuration right so if you are a development background then you will be able to understand this otherwise this is fine yeah and it will have a listener configuration as well so basically this caching requires a listener configuration now caching configuration how this caching configuration looks so this is the what the caching configuration here cache listener listener template template so forget about the templates for now so here if you look at the cache use auto auth token equal to true yes and listener unix listener tcp listener and tcp specific configurations are there so as simple as that right uh, so it's pretty straightforward and if you wanted to more information just go to the this documentation which is a caching right uh, and it will have uh, all the details uh, right so yeah templating so templating point of view basically uh, whenever you define a templates how the vault secrets to be rendered means agent will pull the secrets in automated way in automatic authentication and cache as well but how the rendering will happen so you will be defining in the form of a one template markup so that's a templating language we should use that is in the form of a console template or golang template so that's what the this templating this is a bit advanced because if you are using a vault agent and you wanted to have a one type of a rendering right then you will be using this kind of define a template whatever the you define in the template in that way this particular secrets will be rendered that's what the secrets to be rendered as simple as that so yeah templating configuration if you look at the templating configuration template config static secret render equal to 10 minutes exit on a fail exit on retry failure template source is this one c template all right uh, that's about the extension console template and if it is uh, some whatever the templating language which is in this way it looks and where is the rendering destination etc you can configure right and so based on the template it will put the destination source and destination so yeah and windows service so windows service point of view it's a very simple if your vault client is windows then definitely windows system then you will be using that that's why using a windows service control manager so there is a sc.exe right from the windows point of view and you can just start the service so and the command point of view is a simple it's a powershell command sc.exe create virtual agent and agent start and then pass the vault executable and where is the vault agent so we are just telling the vault sc2 where is the vault is located and all these configurations it, it will out start automatically it's a very simple command so right uh, yeah now these are the some of the architectures so vault agent caching point of view how it works let's say this is a one application and it requires a one token right what it will do is first it will request for the token then immediately it will forward the request to the storage backend so before that there is a cache here because this is a caching architecture so it will go to the system and find out the retrieve the secret token and puts into the cache and give it to the application so here the if you go the detail here once it is returns here stores a returned list token in the in the cache and from the cache it will be delivered so as simple as that so cache is nothing but no need to go to the storage backend and again and retrieving that that's what the it's a whole architecture right so it's a very simple the architecture looks bit different but the point is this is the cache and agent tcp listener running on 8007 that's fine right and once you have a token then automatically it will connect uh, yeah, that's what the it's thing. now vault agent with automatic authentication so how it happens 
let's say this is a vault agent some running on a ec2 machine or whatever right and authenticate to the vault system and verify the identity yes it's verified and after once it is verified very verif after verification the client token will be returned to the agent and that agent will stores the client token in the form of a sync which is a file sync right we stored file sync means which will be nfs or any file file means where you can store you can store it in local or in nfs also this is a configuration right and from the sync this will go to the application and read the token so here the benefit is by using a vault agent automatic authentication here is this application will go and read the directly from the vault without any api authentication etc because all the authentication everything is happened already just simply agent go and just pull that that's it simply read the token that's it application is a very very easy job for application and if requires it will go and request the vault so that's a benefit of using authentication now templating so how the templating here is here the these are the two images right so if you use a console template and based on the templating language it will parse the secret and puts into the an output file so and if you look at the agent or authenticates gets the secrets from the vault templates and renders in the form of a file say you uh, wanted to your secrets to be in a different format so how you will define so you will define a template so based on this diagram you will be able to get what exactly this is now read secrets from the vault so how uh, the secrets will be read in overall flow agent go to the vault system by using april pull authentication this is one example and get the client token right and number 3 it will stores into the sync and read the secrets at the vault right and then here there is a template is applied so keys dot c template and it will render so that this particular web application will use that particular keys so as simple as that right so first get the token it will be stored in the agent token with that token read the secret render it so here is basically some steps are getting reduced and there is a benefit of using that agent so this agent will take care of all these things right so here this particular application it simply will, it will access the output file so this is no relation with the vault just simply this app will read from a some particular file agent with the kubernetes this is one of the favorite use case so first of all what we will be doing in the kubernetes level there is a one service account will create and that service account will have a kubernetes authentication method in the vault so in the vault level this is a vault ui and access authentication method apart from all this authentication method there is a kubernetes authentication method this particular method will be enabled and the data will be written here means like whatever the secret data we will put it in this particular path now in the kubernetes level there is a one service account will create and there is a configuration map what this configuration map will contain is vault agent specific configuration file and if say this is a nginx container wanted to read the secret in automated way uh, from the vault and just show in a pod that's a use case so here vault agent auth will be configuring as a init container so and that init container will take care of this that init container will have a agent and etc and that will write to somewhere in the pod volume mount and th that will be displayed to the nginx container because vault identity entity signed groups if i go to the vault ui and these are the various authentication methods are available let's take me i have a github authentication i have a username password and i have a aws account i have a azure account i have a gcp account right so these are belongs to me these all belongs to me and i am a one client to the one of the vault server so 
every time i have to remember all these different authentication methods and use so that's what the, this whole section is talking about so vault clients is called as a entity and basically these entities are basically authentication providers right because the clients will use a, will call as entity entity is nothing but authentication provider that authentication provider will have a alias just for now just remember it has a alias and one entity can have a zero or more aliases like zero or more accesses just consider now these entities can be grouped right see like a venkat i have a 10 types of uh, authentication system so i can group it so we will see in the next slide so here say user has a multiple accounts right as like my example so this is a world server this is a user and i have a github authentication and i have ldap authentication so in general what i will do i will use a github and i will use a ldap and i will use a third one etc etc now if i am if i am a mem entity member which carries the policies and metadata means like a, this guy is a venkat and has a two different accounts and he is a member of a some entity and which has a policies and metadata so that i can use any of the account and just connect how beauty so that means entity identifier is tied up with the authentication token that's what the it talking and any identifier can log in right so once it is basically these two are identified with the authentication token then it will be grouped together now i can use and login and the one benefit is audit logs uh, audit trails will be logged here because what time i logged in with the lab what time with i logged in with the github what time with the user password something like that if you make it as a identity and groups this is a vault administration purposes will be used say let's say for example this is an entity so name equal to bob smith and he has alias bob and b smith so he has a bob and b smith so and if it is a grouped together right so engineers group right and entity is a bob smith and this will have a, so something like this uh, you can group it right and how to create an entity it's a simple vault right entity and this is a simple syntax right you need to create a name second is entity alias you will create so first you will create an entity some bob smith right in the previous example bob smith and create an alias then after that you will creating a group right that's what they so first you will create an entity right and bob smith base policy qa something and then next is alias so alias will create as a bob and there is another alias called a b smith so one person has a two different alias one is a tester account qa engineering account something these examples taken from the vault documentation need not to worry here but the concept so third one is you will group here so what you are doing is here as engineering name as a group name policy you will apply and this is the word the team and region you will apply now you can apply an external groups as well something like uh, uh, github ldap or okta and uh, any other uh, one so how do you tag with the, a grouping right means like uh, not only the internal external customers also can be grouped that's what the uh, this command will be used maybe in the examination if you maybe come across what is this command is used for maybe you just try to remember identity group identity group alias right and yeah identity entity alias and identity entity so these are the command the mostly important right uh, entity so identity entity identity entity alias and after that grouping so how we will do the identity group right slash identity so it's easy to remember right that's what that it's and the last topic is response wrapping basically this is the use is let's say you have a world server and that world server can be used by multiple clients and every client stores a secret and those secrets has to be encrypted and secured stored securely right and 
there are a possibilities of accidental disclosures especially plain text transmissions or some of the keys right uh, one time keys say some of the say, say let's say some tls keys private keys are the just private keys or some one time keys right so the such kind of a keys you wanted to just retrieve it and use it in that case how do you uh, maintain so this response wrapping concept will be used uh, how the thing is let's say you have a one key and that is uh, that key you wanted to protect and use it only once and you should not wanted to uh, disclose anything so in that case you will be using a response wrapping concept what it will does is that's a key it will put it into the cubby hole uh, secret engine so if you look at the vault secrets list there is a cubby hole this is a per token secret storage means whatever the my vault token is there whenever my vault token expires automatically this particular cubby hole secret engine will be destroyed that's the purpose for this so basically for the response wrapping point of view whatever the secret which you will put it into the cubby hole right as a single use and why it will put it into the cubby hole is whatever the your actual secret which will put it and it's a reference by using its reference you will retrieve that actual token actual secret means you have to unwrap so response wrapping means some response you received which is a some secret you wrap it into the cubby hole and it will have a reference and you will unwrap right then and you can put the limit as well like what time this particular response should say some token i received for the 3 minutes only or 30 seconds so you can or you can put it into the cubby hole with a some ttl so that automatically the token will come and which will reside into the cubby hole something like that and this is useful if you have a multiple environment right and each environment have a each different token so where you will put this is a, the place cubby hole and in, in case of examination they will any question comes just remember that this is the purpose response wrapping and response wrapping will have all this particular information when you wrap it it will have a ttl it will have a token it will have a wrap accessor path date time and etc but not the least cubby hole response wrapping let's say there is an application and there is an admin this admin wanted to share some secret to this particular application and those secrets only this guy should know and nobody else in the team so what he will do is he will create that secret and he will wrap the secrets with the one dedicated token not the regular use token dedicated token and that token this particular application will use unwrap it and then it will read from the this particular store so if you go to the um, vault secret list there is a cubby hole per token right and you go to the vault and just vault help there is a unwrap functionality so vault unwrap and you can do it so here example is in this particular vault will be using a uh, so many users right 10 10 people are using this particular vault cluster and they have a uh, access but this application only wanted to read that secret right how that's what the he will put the secrets and wrap only that wrapping token will help to unwrap so what unwrap and token name you can pass that's all the functionality but here cubby hole is he will put the token into the cubby hole database cubby hole secret engine why because cubby hole is a per token secret storage means if i generate a new token vault token create new new token right then that token specific data all will be stored here right so that's what the its overall purpose of this cubby hole response wrapping i think this is more than enough yeah uh, that's it for this particular session point of view you for listening and please subscribe if you are not subscribe and like comment and share and please note that this is not a sponsored or anything this is a purely sharing session if you guys 
feel that anything if i have missed please feel free to comment it and share it connect with me on the linkedin thank you in upcoming videos maybe i will do the some hands on laps of uh, this vault or kubernetes specific and some other concept thank you thank you all bye bye